Thank you, Professor Rosano. Thank you, uh, dear colleagues. Uh, I, I thank all the colleagues that have been speaking before because uh, uh, they have uh, they have they helped me to to uh, to my speech uh, because you know to speak about from metformin to GLP-1, uh, it means uh, to speak about one century uh, of uh, of treatment of diabetes, and uh, I, I will focus on the last ten years. Uh, these are my disclosure. Uh, it is well known, we have seen, that diabetes is a cardiovascular disease. Uh, and uh, you have seen that uh, in the next future, there will be more than 600 million patients with diabetes, mainly type 2 diabetes. Uh, and why diabetes is a cardiovascular disease? Because there are mainly, um, mainly uh, pathways uh, that uh, bring uh, from hyperglycemia to cardiovascular disease, uh, of course, this glycemia, oxidative stress, endothelial dysfunction. But one of the most important, I think, is the inflammation. Inflammation is really important in uh, bringing uh, hyperglycemia to cardiovascular risk factor. Uh, and we well know that uh, the development of the atherosclerotic plaque it begins uh, with the risk factor that uh, we, uh, we have studied in the university. Uh, but what brings to the real atherosclerotic uh, disease is the systemic inflammation that contributed to the progression and the destabilization of the atherosclerotic cardiovascular disease. Uh, so uh, going quickly to what is the real problem of uh, diabetes, uh, we know that uh, diabetes is uh, a chronic inflammation disease and inflammation with hyperglycemia uh, bring it to endothelial dysfunction and to higher cardiovascular risk. Uh, so what we can do? We, we, we can uh, think about prevention, we can think about treatment of cardiorenal events in type 2 diabetes. Uh, the well-known risk factors as smoking, overweight, dyslipidemia, and hypertension are the clinical features that will become with hyperglycemia uh, to higher the risk of cardiovascular disease. And when type 2 diabetes is diagnosed, uh, the increasing risk of uh, uh, heart failure, uh, kidney disease, and cardiovascular disease is really important. And then uh, we have the, uh, the cardiovascular, the cardiorenal event, and then the repeated cardiorenal event. So what we can do in the first window, uh, in the window of the presence only on the multiple risk factor, uh, we must use uh, uh, all our experience in uh, uh, lifestyle modification, diet, exercise, uh, smoking cessation. But when there is the diagnosis of diabetes in that window, we need to uh, think about prevention. Because uh, all the drugs we have seen till now, uh, all the CVOT we have seen till now, uh, have a strong uh, scientific uh, uh, evidence of reducing cardiovascular risk factor in uh, a certain kind of uh, population. But when you think about prevention, you think that early treatment is the best thing to do with type 2 diabetic patient. Because of course, when uh, there is the cardiorenal event, the stroke, of course, we need in the therapeutic window to use the best drugs that we have. But according to my opinion, it's better to think about the real prevention. We, you, you know well than me that uh, the concept of residual inflammatory risk is still present in patients with type 2 diabetes. Uh, again, uh, the cause is the ongoing chronic inflammation that is another important feature of uh, the metabolic syndrome and of the, uh, the people affected by type 2 diabetes. And now we can measure in a very simple way uh, just uh, uh, with uh, uh, the uh, use of the high sensitive C-reactive uh, protein that could give us in the clinical, could give us some number to identify this patient high risk. Uh, and so we have seen uh, what uh, uh, SKSD guidelines of 2019 and then modified in 2021 uh, try to uh, categorize the people affected by type 2 diabetes in uh, moderate high risk and very high risk. And the study, the capital study that I've seen before, but also the study of the colleague, uh, have uh, tried to uh, identify the, the categories, uh, the risk categories in uh, type 2 diabetic patients. We have made a work with, uh, uh, in, the, in the normal, uh, in the normal uh, clinical practice with an app that we have developed. And uh, just in a few seconds, uh, just filling some doubts uh, in 10 seconds, uh, 
uh, uh, with the, um, the, the the features categories for the uh, categories of high risk, uh, uh, the cardiovascular risk factor, we have identified in our population model 2000 patients that more than 80% uh, of people affected by type 2 diabetes were at high or are very high cardiovascular risk. And uh, uh, what is really important, uh, the, the, the people in uh, the very high category of risk uh, were uh, the uh, worst treated. I mean, uh, HB1 and C were worse was, uh, in, uh, in the, the people with very high uh, cardiovascular risk. And the treatment, as in a capture study, uh, the treatment with the proven effect on the cardiovascular disease uh, were uh, a percentage around 20% uh, with GLP-1 or uh, uh, SGLT2 inhibitor. So uh, we need to uh, um, better uh, quantify our, 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 uh, um, our work. Uh, and what about hb one ac In the uh, risk factor, in the well-known risk factor, hp one ac is the most important, uh, both for uh, acute myocardial infarction and for stroke. So in, uh, uh, in the presence of uh, cardiovascular risk factor, uh, hp one ac metabolic control, is still the most important thing to act, where act on, uh, on the clinical practice. Of course, uh, the, uh, the multiple risk factor, the metabolic syndrome, is something that could be treated uh, all over. We, we had to, uh, we have seen the stain on two study, but we well know that we had to reduce LDL cholesterol, we had to reduce blood pressure, we had to reduce hp one ac So we had to treat our patient as well as possible. And uh, in the last 10 years, uh, we have the possibility to uh, treat as well uh, our patient with what we call uh, the CVOT eras. Uh, we know very well GLP-1 receptor agonists uh, with diabetologists, and it's really important to share our experience with the colleague uh, that works on the heart because the CVOT eras start in 2016. So quite a lot of years ago, and the first one was the leader study, uh, so followed by the substance six study that we have seen before, and uh, the Harmony study in the 2018, and the Rewind study in 2019. Uh, but we have a lot of study after this uh, that uh, taken together can give us uh, the real impression that with the use of just one molecule, and on top of the best treatment of the patient with heart disease and diabetes could change, could modify the history of the disease that we have seen before. And this is a meta-analysis of all the important CVOT trials that have shown that uh, with the use of geolicone receptor agonists could reduce uh, the MACE for the 14%, could reduce the cardiovascular death for the 30%, all cause of mortality for the 12%, fatal and non-fatal myocardial cardiac infarction for the 10%, fatal and non-fatal stroke, uh, and you know what it means in stroke for our patient, uh, for the 17%, uh, also heart failure for the 11%, and this is not with the last study. And uh, what is uh, uh, really important too, is the, the possibility to reduce uh, the composite renal endpoint for the 21% with the GLP-1 receptor agony. So uh, we have really a, a, an opportunity to use uh, the, the best way to treat our type 2 diabetic patient. What is GLP-1? Uh, you know, it's a an hormone, and, and it's an hormone that is secreted from the L cell in the gut, uh, but also in the brain. And uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists uh, are not a cosmetic treatment, but they are drugs uh, that are in, uh, that uh, are had to on glucose normalizing drugs that stimulate gel P1 receptor agonists and increase insulin secretion in a glucose dependent manner. So when glucose is high, the beta cells produce insulin. And this is for us was the first thing very important to know before 2016. So uh, around the, the, the 2000 years. So uh, we have used gel P1 receptor agonists from many years. Uh, and uh, uh, which are the multiple uh, effects uh, on the pancreas, of course, on the brain, uh, on the stomach, and on the liver, but of course on the heart. And the heart uh, the acts on uh, what the 
is the main thing we're acting. So on the inflammation and on, uh, on the progression of atherogenesis and the development of the complication. Uh, also on the kidney is very important effect. I mean, we have seen uh, the reducing of the 20% of the renal effect. Uh, Till now, uh, I'm going to the last, the, the, the last slides. Uh, semaglutide has shown the anti effect in animal models with a, a, a dream, according to me, independent of the dose that they had to use. And it's important in a normal clinical practice to think that just a little bit of GLP-1 is enough to reduce the cardiovascular risk. Uh, we have used uh, not so well in the last time uh, the, uh, the GLP-1 receptor agonists. These are the sure we have, uh, we have produced the, the Italian sure study. And we have used uh, GLP-1 receptor agonists too late uh, after 10 years of disease uh, in obese patient. But now we have the oral one. Uh, and the oral uh, GLP-1, oral semaglutide is a new standard of care that improves patient compliance uh, better option for the treatment we can use earlier in the history of diabetes. Uh, and the efficacy of oral semaglutide is uh, one of the best in the treatment of type 2 uh, diabetic treatment. And uh, the act of uh, body weight and systolic blood pressure is really strong. So uh, we don't have till now the cardiovascular and point, but we know that oral semaglutide could very it, it could use it, it could be used to reduce quite all the cardiovascular risk factor. Uh, is well tolerated and safety consistent with elderly patient, patient with hepatic disease, and patient with kidney uh, disease. So it's very uh, efficacy also in the presence of uh, uh, the kidney disease, uh, and the mace are present independently of the GFR of type 2 diabetic patient. Uh, so I'm going very quickly to, to the last slides. Uh, just uh, the, we have seen uh, just a complication disease. Uh, uh, just uh, two words uh, with uh, what we call, uh, if is it possible, just uh, two words on the, on the very last uh, the slides. Uh, if, you, if I can show uh, just the two, please, thank you. Uh, just the, uh, the last uh, with uh, obesity, that obesity is another important uh, uh, clinical uh, disease linked to inflammation and heart disease. And we have the, the real, the last two study in the 2023 with semaglutide that reduce the risk of heart failure in obesity patient. Uh, and just uh, the last, semaglutide reduce the cardiovascular risk, the MACE, in the patient not uh, diabetic but with BMI more than 27, so uh, BMI uh, not uh, for obesity, uh, with an important reduction of the primary endpoint on cardiovascular death, non-fatal myocardial cardiac infarction, and non-fatal stroke. And uh, this is your just seen, and thank you for <laughs> my time.